So one thing that came up on this past assignment was you simplified an expression and you ended up with a radical in the denominator. Well, this is actually um, the third part of this P.2 section that we're going to talk about. And so it's P.2 and we're going to talk about rationalizing, rationalizing the denominator. Rationalizing denominators. Okay, so again, I said we were going to split this second section up into three days, and here's the third day. And it's what do you do if you have a, a irrational number in the denominator? Because in math, when you simplify an expression, you want rational numbers in the denominator. And so the first example I'm going to give is something we're a little more familiar with. So example one. Let's say I have 5 over 2 radical 3. Okay. First thing I would try to do is, is simplify any radicals that I could. Um, I can't simplify radical 3. I would try to simplify the fraction as much as I can, and I can't. So at this point, I, I can't have this radical 3 right here in the denominator. I need to get rid of that somehow. And so what we do, um, in the case, if there's no plus or minus signs, we're just going to multiply the top and bottom, the numerator and denominator, by radical 3 right here. And here's what will happen. In the numerator, I'll get 5 radical 3. And in the denominator, I'm going to get 2 times, well, radical 3 times radical 3 is 3. So that's 2 times 3. So I get 6. And so notice I don't have that um, radical in the denominator anymore. And there's my final answer. Okay. Um, let's do another one. Example 2. Let's say I have 2 over the cube root of 5. Let's say I have 2 over the cube root of 5. And so you look at this, and, and you'll think back to the previous example, and your first instinct, now don't write this, because this is not correct, but your first instinct is probably going to want to be to multiply the numerator and denominator by cube root of 5. You probably want to do this, okay? But look at what happens if you multiply by this. Again, don't write this, this is not correct. But I'm going to end up with 2 cube root of 5 in the numerator over, well, on bottom now, look what happens. I can multiply these together, and that's going to be the cube root of 5 squared, or 25. So nothing happened. No, no, uh, no radicals went away from the denominator. So that's actually not what we're going to multiply by. We need to multiply by something that's going to cancel out this radical. And I want you to think about what that would be for just a second. What could I multiply the denominator by that would cancel out that denominator right there? And hopefully you came up with it, but it's actually going to be the cube root of 5 squared. And let's look at why. So in the numerator, I'm going to have 2 times the cube root of 25. And in the denominator, look what happens. Now I'm going to have the cube root of 5 to the third power. Because if I multiply the 5 and the 5 squared, I'm going to get 5 to the third. Well, the cube root of 5 to the third power is 5. So I end up with 2 times the cube root of 5 in the numerator. Oh, sorry, that should be 25. That's my fault. And in the denominator, I get just 5. And there's my answer. Okay, so now let's talk about FOIL a little bit. Okay, so I want you guys to see what happens here. Example 3. You guys use the, fir the phrase FOIL. I prefer double distributing. But I want you to look what happens if we multiply 2 plus radical 3 and 2 minus radical 3. Okay, so go ahead and write this down, and I actually want to FOIL this out, and I want you to see what happens when you multiply these together. So when I FOIL, I'm going to get 2 times 2, so 4, minus 2 radical 3, plus 2 radical 3, and then radical 3 times negative radical 3 is negative 3. Well, the negative 2 radical 3 and 2 radical 3 cancel, and I get 4 minus 3, so I get 1. 
And so basically what I'm trying to show is when you multiply these two things together, these are actually called conjugates of one another. Okay, I want you to make a little note of that. But these two things here are called conjugates. Meaning if I multiply them together, the radical is actually going to go away and I'm going to end up with a rational number, um, not an irrational number. And so the reason I bring this up is because I want to look at um, an example right here. And here's my question. What is the conjugate of 6 minus 5 radical 3? Let me say that again. Here's the question. What is the conjugate of 6 minus 5 radical 3? And just take a guess. I know you're not totally familiar with this word yet, but just take a guess. Based on what you see here in example 3, what's the conjugate of 6 minus 5 radical 3? And hopefully you come up with 6 plus 5 radical 3. To be conjugates, basically the sign will change on the radical term right here. And I want you to notice why these are conjugates. I want you to see what happens if I do go ahead and FOIL this out. Okay, So I'm going to go ahead and do that to prove that if I multiply these, I end up with a rational number. The radical will go away. So I'll get 36 plus 30 radical 3 minus 30 radical 3. Now the last one here, when I multiply negative 5 radical 3 and positive 5 radical 3, it's going to be negative. Here's where you need to be careful. I multiply the 5's and get 25. And I multiply the radical 3's and I get 3. So I actually get 75 when I multiply those two things together. The radical 3's cancel here in the middle and I get 36 minus 75, um, which is going to be what, negative 39. The reason this knowledge is important here is because I want to do I want to do two more examples, okay? Two more examples. So let's say I have two over three plus radical seven. Let's say I have this fraction, two divided by three plus radical seven, and I said rationalize that denominator, meaning get rid of that radical seven in the denominator. Okay. So based on the first couple examples we did. Here's what some of you might be apt to do. Don't write this. I like to show some wrong things first and kind of give you a heads up on mistakes you might make. But you might do this. You might say, I want to multiply by radical 7 over radical 7. I put this in red because this is wrong. Don't write this. I would get 2 radical 7 over, well, in the denominator, I would get 3 radical 7 plus 7. I still have a radical in the denominator, so that's not right. So I need to multiply by something else. Okay, And this is where conjugates come into play. So if you have two terms in the denominator here, if I have 3 plus radical 7, I'm actually going to multiply the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of 3 plus radical 7. So I would multiply by 3 minus radical 7. The numerator and denominator. I'd multiply by 3 minus radical 7. So in the numerator, I'm going to get 6 minus 2 radical 7. And in the denominator, I'm going to go ahead and FOIL this out. So I'm going to get 9 minus 3 radical 7 plus 3 radical 7 and then minus 7. So in the denominator, I'm just going to get 2. There's actually one more thing I can do. Um, if you notice, all the whole numbers are divisible by 2. To simplify this more, I can actually divide those all by 2 to simplify this. So that would be 3 minus 1 radical 7 for my final answer. So no denominator. So basically I had to choose what do I need to multiply by to get rid of that radical, and that's where the conjugate comes into play. If you multiply by the conjugate, you're going to get rid of the radicals in the denominator. Okay. We'll do one more example, and then you guys can start your assignment. I forget what example we're on, so I'm just going to write the next one. So let's say I had 5 plus radical 2 over 1 minus radical 3. Okay. So I want to get rid of that radical 3 from the denominator. And there's two terms there. There's a minus sign, so I actually need to multiply by the conjugate. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 1 plus radical 3. I like to put all the quantities in parentheses to remind myself to FOIL. 
You don't have to do that, but I like to do that. So the numerator, I'm going to FOIL. I'm going to get 5 plus 5 radical 3 plus 1 radical 2 plus radical 6. In the denominator, I'm going to get 1 plus radical 3 minus radical 3 minus 3. So I'm going to have 5 plus 5 radical 3 plus radical 2 plus radical 6. That's a whole lot of stuff in the numerator. And in the denominator, I'm going to get 1 minus 3, so negative 2. And I try to see if there's any other simplifying I can do, if there's any radicals I can simplify, anything I can combine or factor out. There's actually nothing else I can do here. But notice I don't have a radical in the denominator anymore, which is the main goal of this whole thing. So this was the last part of this, this second section, and it had a lot of stuff. It had exponent rules, it had simplifying radicals, um, rational exponents, and then the last part was rationalizing the denominator. So after you guys get all these notes copied down, you can go ahead and start your assignment, and hopefully you have some time to work on your assignment in class.